So several of you guys have asked me to test the AMD RX Vega 56 with the bias of the Vega 64 since it apparently should lead to pretty significant performance gains for free. We do already know this doesn't transform your Vega 56 GPU into a Vega 64, but it does theoretically boost the performance and allows for higher clock speeds. However, I'm not stopping there, I'll go for the extra mile and will overclock, basically squeezing every last bit of power out of the Vega 56. So before we move on, I'd like to let you guys know that Stefan Müller kindly lent me his GPU for all these tests. Thank you! And of course I would never do such experiments with a product that isn't mine. But he gave me permission to do so and he insisted on me doing this test too. Although prior to shipping this card to me he flashed the Vega 64 bias onto this Vega 56 and that's very convenient since we're getting a dual bias switch. So not much can really go wrong here. So whether or not these clock speeds reported by GPU-Z are accurate, instead of the previous 1590 MHz on the core and 800 MHz on the memory, the same GPU but with the Vega 64 bias now clocks at 1630 and 945 MHz respectively. However, I took it one step further and went for the max I could squeeze out. That were 1647 MHz and a whopping 1050 MHz on the memory. All simply done by increasing the frequency by 1%, setting the memory to that value and of course upping the power limit by 50% which also is the max. Voltage? No, we're not touching it. We're good with these settings, you'll find out why in a minute. Ok, and keep in mind this is all done with this AMD reference design of the Vega 56 by XFX basically. Now what do the gains look like? In the charts, as you've seen, besides the Vega 56 stock results, I've also included overclocked results I achieved with the standard original Vega 56 bias. For the GPU clock, I couldn't really get any higher than 1647 MHz, be it with the original or Vega 64 bias. However, one of the benefits of the Vega 64 bias is that I could increase the memory clock. Instead of the 900 MHz, I could then take it up to 1050 MHz. All in all, we do see performance gains with the Vega 64 bias flashed. Sadly, such a game cannot be seen throughout all tested games. Some games even ran a little worse than they did with the original BIOS plus the overclock. However, for some reason in certain game titles one can see a huge improvement in frame rate. But all in all I wouldn't really say it's worth it. No, because simply overclocking the Vega 56 with the BIOS it comes with almost leads to just as good and in some cases even better results. Also you may have noticed with the Vega 64 BIOS flashed throughout almost all games tested, we see a minor decrease in FPS at 2160p 4K. But then again we have to look at it this way, maybe this specific card clocks higher than others. If you weren't at luck in the silicon lottery, flashing the Vega 64 bias onto your Vega 56 GPU might do wonders and allow for higher clock speeds, who knows. It's just that in my case it's not really worth it, especially since the temperatures do in fact increase and the most shocking factor might be the extreme 
increase in power consumption. With my test system, I ended up with a little over 500 watts. That's 150 watts more than with the Vega 56 overclocked, or roughly 230 watts more compared to stock results. I'm not sure about the longevity of the reference model of the Vega 56 when pushing it that far beyond its stock values. Maybe I'm just a little paranoid, but I would not recommend it. Overclocking on the other hand, yes, absolutely, given you don't mind the higher power draw. And as always, thanks for watching.